director of the Center for Human Reproduction. And it's my pleasure to be here today with my colleague, Dr. David Barad, who heads up uh, our art unit, our IVF unit. Our topic today for a little conversation uh, is an increasing problem that uh, we are seeing in our daily practice. And that are couples who have undergone IVF cycles frequently, quite a number of them, uh, at other IVF centers, uh, with all of their embryos found to be chromosomally abnormal. Uh, and uh, they therefore, despite many efforts, despite many cycles, uh, never make it to an embryo transfer. Uh, since we are facing this problem practically every day uh, and since the questions that we are hearing uh, from so affected couples are all very similar, we decided that this may be a good format to explain how we here at CHR uh, view those cycles, those results, those embryos, and what to do. David, do you want to take over? Well, to begin with, uh, you have to remember that we've been practicing IVF for a long, long time before there were uh, such tests. And uh, in all of that practice, it's very, very unusual um, to uh, have any major uh, genetic problems arise as a result of an IVF pregnancy, especially because people are so vigilant about these pregnancies, they get screened and, uh, and take appropriate action if there, if there is a problem. And they have early diagnosis. Yeah, early diagnosis. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, originally this kind of screening came up as a way of selecting embryos. And it could be that might make some sense if you have 20 embryos and you want to pick out the most favorable one to help you achieve pregnancy now. But somehow or other, um, this has become uh, viewed as a way of uh, selecting out embryos, of denying embryos a chance to exist. And uh, I just said to a patient today, I guess it's amazing that people have been around for millions of years without such selection. <laughs> Uh, how, how did we live before this? You know, this is like a new kind of eugenics uh, yeah. where, where, you're, where you're selecting out embryos and, and telling them they can't even get a chance. Yeah, a eugenic that doesn't work. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that is absolutely correct. And uh, as we so, so frequently hear say, uh, before there was chromosomal testing in, of embryos in IVF, there was no epidemic of abnormal, chromosomally abnormal babies born, and maybe even more importantly, since there is increasing testing of embryos, the prevalence of uh, chromosomally abnormal babies born has not declined in right. any way. So what's the purpose? Yeah. But this is only the background mm -hmm. of, of our theme today. Uh, where I really want to go uh, because this is what we face in our daily practice uh, and what we are being asked all the time is what to do if you have undergone a whole bunch of IVF cycles and all of your embryos have been declared as abnormal. This is a problem we are seeing every day. We are getting lists of embryos with their chromosomal abnormalities. And uh, since we are uh, one of the centers that very actively transfers so-called chromosomally abnormal embryos, uh, this is becoming really a daily issue here. I think it's very important uh, to reframe what, what, we, what we just said uh, and, and point out that we are talking about embryos that have biopsies that were abnormal, Correct. which does not necessarily reflect the remainder of the embryo. In fact, in time after time when we've looked at this, 
you do multiple biopsies on these embryos, they often come back with multiple different signals. Yeah. So we, we, we agreed today that there are multiple reasons. And again, I, it's not the subject of, of our little conversation here today. There are multiple reasons why we no longer trust chromosomal testing of embryos as a test. And actually, we were the first here at CHR who no longer did trust those test results because we were the first ones in the world to decide that at least some of these embryos can and should be transferred. Uh, there are many reasons why you cannot trust this test. But how do we approach uh, a couple that uh, comes uh, after having failed the number of IVF cycles with 12 embryos in the freezer that all were declared abnormal? What should that couple do? Well, one option is to take a look and see what those biopsies were and make some decisions about whether any of these embryos could, in fact, be transferred. Yeah, uh, and this is exactly what we now, almost on a daily basis, are doing. And I think it is important uh, for the public to understand how we make the decision which embryos can or should not be transferred. And, and I think it is important to point out that we are quite conservative. Yeah. So uh, the way how we make this decision uh, is in principle based on the hypothesis that this test is either right or wrong. Correct. It's either correct or it's not correct. If the test is correct, then there is again the option that uh, this is a chromosomal abnormality that never implants, or if it on rare occasion implants, it will immediately be miscarried, right. or that it is a chromosomal abnormality uh, that never implants. Mm -hmm. and if, for example, a chromosome is missing, a so-called monos uh, monosomy, is known never to, to lead to a live birth. Uh, and therefore, when we select embryos, we decide accordingly. So we're selecting embryos that, if you believe the diagnosis is correct, would 99 999 times out of a thousand never go on to be a baby. So the risk is not that you would have an abnormal baby who's born. The risk is that you would have a transfer and not become pregnant. Correct. Or have a transfer and possibly miscarry. But you're also opening yourself up to a significant possibility of having a normal pregnancy. Completely normal pregnancy. And we just published a, a, a paper with some colleagues uh, of the Worldwide Survey. We know of over 400 babies that have been born worldwide after transfer of so-called abnormal embryos. Those are whole embryos that actually were destined to be discarded. Right. Okay. And I think that is probably the best evidence uh, for how damaging chromosomal testing can be because when a couple has only very few embryos and they all are abnormal, you are taking basically all of their pregnancy chances away from them. You don't give them a chance. So, so a typical story we see is somebody who's gone who maybe can produce one or two embryos per cycle and they go through several cycles and they store those embryos up uh, in the freezer and they process all those biopsies uh, together, together uh, and they come back with one of these results after investing a year yeah. and who knows how many thousands of dollars uh, yeah. and emotional energy uh, into this process. Yeah. And this is exactly the picture we, we see on, on a daily basis. 
so what's the advice to give to patients, aside of the fact that we obviously, as everybody by now knows, are not big fans of testing chromosomes in embryos in the first place. But once patients have done it for whatever reason, and there are some good reasons, once in a while there is a clinical indication for such testing, but those indications are rare. Uh, but once a couple is sitting on a whole bunch of these so-called abnormal embryos, and this is happening more frequently because, fortunately enough, many IVF centers are getting a little more cautious about immediately throwing out the embryos. So the chance that those embryos are still in existence are, are slowly getting better. Well, you remember, the, the current um, normal process for the centers that are doing these biopsies is to grow the embryos to blast, do the biopsy, and freeze the embryo while they're setting it out for analysis. So initially, the embryos are all preserved. Uh, it takes another overaction on the center's part to pull the embryos and thaw them. They're becoming more hesitant to discard uh, those embryos, and that is to the advantage of patients because it gives them now the opportunity to say, hey, I changed my mind, please reverse my consent to discard so-called abnormal embryos, keep them, and get advice what to do. And this is probably the, the bottom line of what we have to tell the public, uh, check your embryos before, before you really allow them to be discarded. Well, I would go so far as look at your consent very carefully and don't give permission uh, for, the, for the center better. to discard them. Yeah. The, the, the problem is that if you don't give the consent, most centers will not even offer you the test. And unfortunately, many IVF centers uh, now have gone to a policy where if you don't agree uh, to have your embryos tested, uh, they will not even do your IVF cycle. Well, so if you have to have your embryos tested, just don't agree to have them thrown away. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. So uh, the bottom line uh, for couples who face this problem of having only chromosomally abnormal embryos is one, don't let them be thrown away, and two, consult with a physician at CHR or elsewhere about what the likelihood of every abnormality that is listed there is to be real and therefore to uh, be associated with a real risk uh, for birth of a chromosomally abnormal child. And if you do that with people who are really familiar uh, with the subject, you will be surprised how many of the embryos that you have in the freezer and are described as chromosomally abnormal are actually transferable. Anything you want to end with? No, just remember, this, all of this technology was created to help you achieve a pregnancy. It wasn't created to avoid these other problems. We're not doing IVF to avoid miscarriage. We're doing IVF to help you achieve a pregnancy. And the only way you can completely know that you're not going to get pregnant is to never do a transfer. And that is absolutely correct. And then also remember, you're spending extra money for already a very expensive procedure and without very much benefit. Thank you for joining us for today. Uh, and I hope uh, that we gave you some useful information uh, in a very important uh, problem in IVF practice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, David. Thank you.